Let somebody in, please. Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call the February 21st, 2023 meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is being conducted in person and remotely over Zoom. We are recording the meeting. Is there anybody else recording it? Seeing none, we will move right along. Okay, first order of business, we have minutes. February 6th. Pam, it seems like we are pretty well caught up. Is that how you see it? Is there anything from prior years at this point you're aware of, or we're just dealing with 2023? To the best of your knowledge, Senator, this is, okay, thank you. Is that how it is done? To the best yeah. of your knowledge, yeah. I have no recollection. I have no, thank you, thank you. Of any other meeting. Ms. Courtney, if I ask you a question, please turn your mic on at that point. Thank you. All right, any comments on the meeting? Biggest thing I think that happened. We talked about action, we talked about the PFAS, and Greg, perhaps uh, later in the meeting, give us an update on what, if anything, we know. For PFAS? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're status quo at the moment. Right. We're, from your board or something yeah. during the board yeah. reports. I move approval. <laughs> A moment of levity, apparently. Okay, bottom of uh, page two. I don't have it in front of me. Oh. Send a list of concerns to uh, AOC. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not AA. I, uh, <laughs> not AA. <laughs> Hope they're not going to AOC. Hmm. Not that one. Just AO, whichever. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And if you get a chance, look over 21, 22. I will, I will do yeah. that, John, tomorrow. Sure. Okay. Next, the highway superintendent. Mark, do you want to come on up? Uh, Mark, I say I think uh, your department's doing a great job. Thank you. In the winter season, such as it is. Yeah. Half the days are spring and half the days are winter. <clears throat> so just like the surprising little snow we got overnight. Yeah, it's been a real tough winter. <laughs> as far as as far as that stuff goes, yeah. Predictability. Exactly. <clears throat> oh. I asked you earlier today, and I think uh, you told me we're in pretty good shape with snow and ice account that uh, at this point we certainly don't anticipate in february needing a vote to run in the red nothing you know, march will be a different story but right now we're in good shape for the rest of the month we are okay. we are with a full full salt shed right. uh vehicles and equipment are in good shape mm -hmm. so um yeah we're i think donald remember it's pretty unusual we get through february without having to vote the red. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, I looked it up. Usually it's the first or second week of February. We're right? done, right? Yeah. yeah. Good. That's been pretty consistent, like even with well, heavier was, winters. Yeah, yeah. Some preemptive action by your part last fiscal year where you filled the salt shed on, on last year's diamond, if you will, and that helped a bit. It did. Yeah. It did. So. And the equipment's in good shape. So. It should be in great shape because it's all undercover now, right? It is. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then people come in all toasty and warm because they're inside. Nice. Well, you know, what's nice, too, is to be able to have things loaded and ready to go. Right. And that, that in itself saves us 15 minutes, right. which, you know, uh, 
we need to get out there right away. Sure. 15 minutes is. Conditions uh, can go like that. And, absolutely. Uh, exactly. Okay. Uh, the reason we asked you in, as you're aware, is that when we negotiated your contract and the highway union, we put a clause in there, so to speak, that we would you know, check me if I'm wrong, Don. Basically, if the local CPI as of February 1st was over 3%, mm -hmm. the board would consider reopening the contract to potentially make an adjustment to the following year's rate. Sure. Don, salary. Salary zone. Right. Salary zone. Mm -hmm. So uh, the board last week decided that yes, or two weeks ago decided that yes, this is something we would consider doing, okay. especially after we got the word from the advisory committee that they were recommending a COLA for the non bargaining employees in the, in the town. Understood. Yeah. No problem. So um, does the board have any, currently you have a, a two and a half percent for next year? Yes. No. Okay. Uh, you have a number in mind? Percent. <laughs> yeah. You're aware of what the town, the rest of the people are getting? Four percent. Correct. Um, you know, originally before before this this meeting, I I was kind of looking at CPI numbers and inflation numbers and stuff like that, and uh, you know, I did have a number of five percent in mind. However, when I I did see that the COLA came out at 4%. Um, you know, if that's, that's the going rate, then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I really am. You know, uh, we appreciate that. I mean, yeah. It's all good I mean, that we're all, I'm not say a team player, but yeah, we all want to be consistent. Yeah. yeah. Um, is, is that, what do we do about year three? It's also in, in there for a reconsideration at that point, too. Because it does say if there were first same of the yeah, second you, you're comfortable the with the same point. wording like that, you know, so in year three of the we might come back again. Right. Sure. This is strictly for next year's yeah. correct. Yeah, no, yeah. I understand. Um, do we have to do we have to write an addendum? Brief addendum? No, no, it's in the it's in the contract itself that you can. Okay. Uh, Make an adjustment. All right. Does that adjustment need to be reflected in that contract, though? That well, amount? I, you know, I would probably write it in there right. afterward. And Not quite a reopen. By action of the board, we moved to modify the yeah. Uh, yeah. the rate of increase for year two of the contract. Yeah. Yeah, basically, I had anticipated that Brandon was coming in. Uh, I did check, and they I said six fifteen. No, oh, we're, we're running. We're running in a couple minutes. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I. Did just have a quick question based on for myself and for the uh, the rest of the department. Should I resubmit my uh, budget figures to Please. the board of selectmen and advisory committee? Yeah. Well, that's going to change the bottom right. line for town meeting. So because I right yeah okay. Well, it's yep. not assuming we haven't taken a vote yet. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I move uh, we adjust the highway superintendent salary to 4% per our contract. For year two? For, for year two. Fiscal year 24. Fiscal year 24. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So, Bob, you'll Thank make you. the appropriate modification to the contract. We'll make the appropriate modification. Maybe, a, I think as okay. Don said, maybe just a little. Doesn't have to be uh, paragraph at the end of it. That's part of the contract that they can do this. Basically, just codifying just the number, just so we have a record of it. Yeah, right. like exhi an exhibit A or something Basically, like that. Basically, yeah. you initial it, Bob initials it, and then we'll get it at that point. Sounds good. Thank you. Right. While we're waiting for the union, is there anything you want to touch on in the department at this point? Or oh, let me talk about uh, transfer station. So. Uh, we got a update from Robert Kiever. Yes. And I did reply back to uh, Robert is the basically the guy on site on the project, if you are a project superintendent. Yes. So I don't, I'm not aware of any issues at this point, but I did suggest to him that an on site meeting next Thursday would be a bad idea just to look over the progress, you know, how the clearing is going, how we're still maintaining access. For town residents, things like that. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you, 
I didn't I didn't chime in yet on on that. Uh, was that that meeting for next Thursday or next this Thursday? Thursday. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, then I will definitely be there. Okay. Um, I I couldn't remember if it was this Thursday. I know uh, no, my no, wife has no. a doctor's appointment. No, next Thursday. For... So that's an open invitation to the board. Um, there's not going to be any discussion. Basically, we're just going to walk us through what's happening. Here's our stockpiles. At that point, maybe even got a ballast up in place, and we can see how it's going at that point. So. Sure. March no. Nope. And mm -hmm. that'll be March second. Yes. And not until next month. It's our month. That I'm aware of. Also, uh, we haven't had any issues um, that I'm aware of. There haven't been any issues with uh, residents mm -hmm. up there. Um, so no, I think a gate, meeting would be a great idea. To, how about the gate being open and all that? That's been uh, resolved. They were supposed to put barrels and signage saying close to public mm -hmm. during non-transfer station hours. So they're not going to close the gate, just sign it, yeah, basically? They, yeah. They, they were reluctant on keeping the gate closed because of the amount of tractor trailers coming in out. And okay. from what I've observed, that's been happening. I have signage now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I went up there one day and drove straight in and nobody oh. stopped me. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was no signage, no nothing. I just walked in, you know. Are we aware of anybody dumping during this open time? Um, there was maybe a month or two ago, there right. was stuff in there, right. you know, tires and whatnot. Oh. Maybe, should we be looking at, just to throw it out there, some type of trail cam type thing feeding to dispatch, or we don't take advantage of that. And I, I, know, I, I mean, wonder about getting one for the highway building as well. I think once once this project's over, it's not going to be open to the public unless it's open to the public. Right. So nobody's going to be getting through a gate. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh. Those type of things. I'd like to get one for highway. You know, for municipal buildings should be under some type of supervision, if you will. Sure. I mean, it's possible. Sure. You think it's worth getting a quote from uh, probably uh, Cibola and see what kind of cost it is to install them and check with dispatch? Do we have more channels that we can bring them in on? We're talking about for, for surveillance, for monitoring, the, the video monitoring? Yeah. Well, I think it all depends on what's up there for Wi Fi. If there's Wi Fi up there or if it's a network assisted device. I mean, I don't know what's up there per se yeah. right now. I mean, is it a necessity to have a, a camera up there to monitor? I mean, once, like I said, Not once so it's closed. Not so much transfer, but I'm thinking more of highway building. Highway building? Yeah. Well, that, that would, I mean, I guess that would be easy. I mean, you guys would have a, a network connection there. They're connected connection there. already, right. Yeah. Well, you're kind of our tech guy on the board. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, anything's possible. Excellent. Would you like to look into it? Sure. You're a man. All right. Still no. Just uh, real quick to, I guess, uh, I Don, I wanted to let you know that I did follow up with oh, yeah. National Grid today. Um, so they've set the new poll and moved their back up on what? On what? The thing in front of Billy Bonds. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The one in front of Billy Bonds. The that's, asshole? That keeps leaning yeah. more and more. Yeah. He's got the tether attached to it. wired down the Main Street pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting to hear back on an update uh, for that. Um, it, I imagine it, that's one of those yep. things. It's a turf war between the grid and uh, the utilities. Like <laughs> it always wires. is. Yeah. Well, uh, the the darn thing is, you know, it's on its bank, mm -hmm. and when this when it gets soft this spring, when it starts raining, that ball's going to mm -hmm. go, and then. I'm not very well, confident in the tether they have up there either. No, no. cable tether. <laughs> no. no, and it's been and I, I reached out uh, several weeks ago about that. Um, never heard anything back. As it turns out, I think my my contacts were uh, no good anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so I reached out to another contact today, and and she's going to provide me with an update and some new contacts for Charter and Verizon because that's who they're waiting on. Okay. A lot of times they move around or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. So it's, it's kind of hard to keep up. Well, what happens if there's an accident? Well, what happens if a, if a car comes and takes a pole out like that and shuts off? Like, don't they come out right away? I think they're and out there within a couple hours. They're kind of, one, yeah. Generally, they're contacted by the police department. Yeah. So the police department has some contacts. But, again, they, they're ever-changing. They're ever, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm whether they're moving positions or whatever, but um, so I will, I will keep the board updated on that, on that okay. situation too. Um, quickly. So 
in the next month or so, you should be preparing your construction schedule or you know, proposed one for uh, you know for next year. Yes. Obviously, we don't have a good sense or 100% good sense of what the state is doing money-wise. There was some chatter about an increase to Chapter 90. The way the no, I'm sorry, the speed at which they're moving on the budget right now doesn't lead a lot of hope. I don't think. So you might be just stuck with your normal number. Yeah, what was that extra money we got last year? Impact? So that was the wrap, the wrap, wrap money. Wrap yep. money, yeah. 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 So you might just do with the regular regular, I should say, between five and six hundred thousand, something like that. I know that last year we had pushed Highland Circle a bit. I will say I did speak to a resident up there. They're not going to be doing the the work through the cul-de-sac that they thought they might. So there's no reason to hold up on that. Okay. Well, that's yeah. I don't believe that subdivision that was bought happening up there is still on the boards anymore. Yeah. If anything, it'll be frontage lots. Those were a couple of right. items that were kind of holding me back right. on that neighborhood. So to know that is yeah, that's yeah. good news. But that moves that back up in the, the order. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I can price that out. And what I'll do is I'll I'll price out. I'll price out everything, estimate everything for uh, what I would expect for local funds. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, anything extra, extra would just be a bonus, uh, an increase in Chapter 90, or if they decide to uh, provide more wrap money, mm -hmm. um, it's a possibility. I can, sure. I can have a couple projects on reserve, mm -hmm. you know, just in case. I did ask Mark to keep checking on cement prices you know if that bond money ever comes through and we're ready to go uh, last year was trending higher so i mean you had your estimate of 1.3 who knows if that's still good or is better you know who's to say if all of a sudden cement prices drop inside the 1.3 we can do the other side of the road who's to say the mark will keep an eye on it for us. we'll follow up yeah okay yeah good hit back i see brandon is here sure Nope. Leave it on. Yep. Brandon, you want to come up? Hello. Hey there. Hey, How are you doing? How's it going? Good. Like we told Mark, great job at the highway department this winter season. I know it hasn't been as vibrant as you want it to be. Yeah. But you're probably also not happy plowing at one in the morning either. Sure. Okay. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. 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 <laughs> so um, we called you in because as we just went over with Mark, it was in the contract that we signed a year and a half ago that if the local CPI, Consumer Price Index, was over three on February 1st, we would consider reopening the contract to make an adjustment to the, the negotiated bump in year two. We did see that happen. The advisory committee also saw that happen. And they recommended to the board that all non-bargained employees for the town get a 4% COLA for next year. I think our board, the position is that we think that's a fair COLA to offer to the superintendent plus the union as well, which Mark agreed with. You know, and that puts everybody in the town on the same footing. I don't know if you had a chance to chat with your, your uh, people, mm -hmm. you know. Gather them all in a big room, all four of you. <laughs> um, so the only thing that we can negotiate is the year two. So right, next year would come up again, same thing, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, so what did you guys get for that inflation number? I can't recall, like I said, it was advisory, but we're, like I said, we're gonna offer 4% instead of the 2.5%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, as misleading as that number is, obviously the inflation of the fuel and energy costs, food costs are skyrocketing. As mm -hmm. you mentioned, this winter has been pretty much no overtime. Um, and 4% would be generous during normal circumstances, but um, has there in, been any talks about a hazard pay or bonus, whatever, for the employees that worked during COVID. I remember a while back there were talks about about that. Is there anything? Nothing recent. No, nothing recent. I had read that up before, but there's been nothing recent. 
And I could imagine there still is a lot of money left from that COVID relief that we got, right? And that expires in what? Uh, the CARES money End of expired. 24. The end of 24 or the beginning end of 24? End of calendar 24. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which money is that? The ARPA? ARPA. Yeah, ARPA. All right. Yeah. Um, there were hopes that there would be some kind of bonus. Mm. So that's out of the picture or? Nothing we've discussed recently. No. No. Okay. So to say that would be something that would be, in my mind, something you have to discuss with, it would relate to a lot of different employees in town. And what we're doing here with this proposed COLA is what we're doing with the advisory committee for every all the employees in town. And we think it's important that everybody, you know, a rising tide floats all boats, but everybody's consistent. So, again, it doesn't prejudice next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We told Mark, same thing. Next year's call could be different. Probably will be then. We're not limiting you. Oh, you have sign up. Have, have you had discussion with your membership, what they think, or do you want to take this back to your membership and see if they, what they think? Um, I, I think we're pretty much all on board that the 4% is there. We appreciate that. I mean, <laughs> you've always been team players. We yep. got that. And if we could do more, we do more. Yep. But then it's all about consistency, too. And then next year we'll, re we'll review we'll it. We'll reopen it again. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's hitting all of us. But also hitting the people living in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll entertain the same motion then, Don. Uh, I move we adjust the FY24 um, to 4% salary. The salary. In the contract. Yeah, the union, contract. union contract, right? And there would just be an addendum to it, and then next year we can do it again. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So basically, Bob will type up a little amendment that goes at the end of the contract. And if you initial it and he initials it, that'll be fine. Mark says he's going to go ahead now that you've voted that. He can adjust the budget submitted. So now it'll be reflective of the higher number you're getting. Okay. Next year. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Now we can chat about stormwater. Stormwater experts want to come up? Get these fine fellows. Um, we also have online from uh, Ty and Bond, who, Tom LaCourt, who had done a summary. I think, uh, Bob, you had seen, Bob and Pam had seen the summary that uh, Tom wrote up. Pam? Okay. Okay. So basically for year six. So who wants to start off and tell us what we've got to do in year six? Is that you, Tom? Uh, yeah, I can take that. Hi, everyone. Um, sorry I'm not there in person, um, but I'm glad I have the opportunity to, to talk to you, at least from my kitchen table. <laughs> um, so yeah, in year six, which is the upcoming permit year starting uh, July 1st, um, in addition to just all the annual maintenance tasks, um, there is a requirement that um, you install what's called a demonstration retrofit BMP for nutrient removal on a municipal property within the MS4 regulated area. Um, basically what that means is just some sort of um, structure or management system to handle stormwater uh, on a municipal property in, in the MS4. Um, so in, I think it was in permit year three, we, Ty and Bond did a study for you guys that kind of looked at what municipal properties were in the regulated area. Um, we identified 15 properties, two of which had uh, impervious surface area, and that's the, the parcel that the senior center is on, 
uh, which is a shared parcel with the police department and the parcel uh, that the Thornton Burgess school is on. Um, so at that time in year three, those were kind of the two that we suggested that you focus on. We also identified um, some of the roadways that's, that are in the MS4 where um, if you're doing roadway improvements, there might be the opportunity to, um, to install something there. Um, but really, really the two that emerged to the top were the Senior Center and the Thornton Burgess Middle School. Um, Tom, do you have a, a map of what this, the MS4 area is? I know we talked before that. Yeah, I do. Um, Bob, does he need I, to screen, do you, do you need to make him a co-host so she, he can screen share or? You want to do that? Yeah. Co I've got it ready to go as soon okay. as I can on the screen here. But basically, John, as we as we talked earlier, basically it's the western portion of town, everything west of um, Wilbraham Road. Mm -hmm. um, You're a co-host, Tom. Go ahead and share it. Okay, um, yep, share screen, there we go. All right, can you see that? Yeah, oh. yes. Okay, so that's, that's the map. This area here in the crosshatch is mm -hmm. MS4 regulated area. Um, uh -huh. So basically it's everything west of Summers Road, Wilbraham Road, and this funky little area here. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, Gary, can we do something at Mill Pond or no? As a, as a demonstration project? Yeah. You potentially, but it's probably a lot more involved than what we talked about uh, with Tom and Adam before that with Emily using the senior center. Um, the senior center currently has a stormwater outlet that discharges basically towards the wetland to the east. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two leaching galleys in the parking lot that function to mitigate some of the stormwater, but I, we may be able to do a rain garden at the outlet area because it takes so much of the, the senior center runoff and would actually be an improvement. It, at, at one point we thought that the stormwater committee thought that with the senior center addition going in mm -hmm. that we could couple the addition um, design and upgrade the stormwater system um, and do some type of a rain garden as part of the addition. Mm -hmm may still be able to do that um, in years in this coming year six. But if the timetable for the addition and and going out to bid and getting something in the ground um, doesn't happen within that year six, mm -hmm. we still could do the outlet and it doesn't impact what would be done with the addition. That was my concern that, you know, you're quite aware of what our potential area is for the addition. Correct. This would be two totally separate because this Could, would be totally east of the shed, basically. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Fine. And, and, you know, in terms of dollars and cents, it's pretty minimal mm -hmm. in terms of both design and, and construction. Mm -hmm. um, again, it needs to be sized and, and planted and, and all those good things, but it even with the addition um it you could probably accomplish that in mm -hmm. the year six all right maybe incorporated in the, the seniors budget uh, the addition or not but again from a dollar and cents standpoint you know good engineering you could cover the fact of the addition because right. we've got an idea about how much more impervious would be added right if the addition goes forward. All right, Tom, I don't want to get too far off track, but I got a question for Bob here. Okay. Bob, as you're aware, you know, part of your dealings with Steve Tyler for the, the MVP mm -hmm. thing, 
you're talking about putting the same type of thing like a rain garden in at the park, yes. which is not part of this district. Yes. What's the constraint on where that has to be? Is there a way that no, we can isn't. make this one do both? Yes. Okay. There isn't. In fact, I just wrote a note to myself to right. talk to Steve tomorrow about moving the proposal for a rain garden mm -hmm. uh, from Memorial Park over in this direction. The, the rain garden at Audubon is all set. They're mm -hmm. supportive, and it's going to go forward. Um, the, the proposal for Memorial Park was a bit controversial mm -hmm. uh, out of concern that some members of the Park Commission had, that the Park and Rec Commission had, that um, it would produce pollinators, bees, mm -hmm. and that that could become a problem for some of the young people who play near there. So, well, I'm sure the seniors uh, won't be happy about that either. No, but, they won't. You know. No, but I mean, this sounds like something that. Uh, no, I'm saying. Now, might be my next question is then the cost of it is that already figured in that grant we're getting for MVP? Um, yes and no. Some, but not, maybe not all of it. But at least some of it would offset. Yes. If we didn't have that, we would have to pay the entire thing right. out of a stormwater budget. Yes. And this way, at least we can mitigate some of that by using right. it as part of classifying it to solve two projects, mm -hmm. basically. All right. Okay. Just a thought. Tom, back to you. What else do we have to do? Um, you know, again, that's that demonstration retrofit BMP is the biggest permit requirement of year six. Everything else is just kind of maintenance activities, you know, things that things that we've been doing all along. So, you know, our annual report preparation would be a task. Our quarterly inspections that we do at the um, at the transfer station in the highway garage would continue. Um, you know, really, really this this requirement here that we're talking about is the big one for year six. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think in the email that I had put together that I sent you guys last week, I talked about um, catchment investigations that have to be done by permit year 10. And I put in some some numbers to accommodate that. That is something that you could postpone. Um, you know, your your MS4 is relatively small compared to some other communities that we're dealing with. So, um, you know, to do to do the catchment investigations is probably, you know, maybe like, I don't know, two or three works, two or three weeks worth of field work. Um, and we've got four years to do it in. So, um, so if you are looking to you know, reduce your budget for next year for stormwater activities. We could postpone that to, and start that in year seven or eight. Um, there's no benefit to doing it early other than you have it done. Um, but like I said, you have to, you, know, you have until year 10. Yeah. I'm trying to get a sense, and Don, you're really kind of the, I don't say the expert on this, but you've been dealing with it for a while to try and get a sense of what our budget's going to be for next year. It sounds like we need to get a sense of the, the financial impact this garden thing is going to have. That's the biggest that's change really, in yeah. the budget for the coming yeah, year. Yeah, that, that's our biggest unknown, and that's the thing we've been kind of struggling with. Um, it does sound like between Bob working with Steve Tyler of that group, I can't think of the name of the group, but between the two or three of you, you could find out how much is going to be covered by the grant there, how much would have to be raised and appropriated, basically. Right to do the rest of it. So we need if We will do that tomorrow. And, and I was just thinking in the old days when the federal EPA came up with mandates, they mm -hmm. would say, oh, here's some money. We'll share some funds with you to help undertake the improvement. That's, that's, a, that's great history about how is President Carter doing now? Right, Thank right, you. Right. Yeah. Here are the rules and regulations, <laughs> and here are the sanctions if sure. you don't do it. And use property taxes, by the way. Tom, Tom, can I change the subject a little bit? I want to talk about this year's deliverables. Yep. Okay. Uh, so the stormwater mapping support is continuing? Correct. Okay. And the uh, stormwater management plan update, the public meeting, I guess we have to handle that, right? Um, yeah, we typically put together a presentation you know, we, and I think I was, I forget the date that we did it, um, 
last year, but I think towards the end of the summer or early fall, I was out there, Tracy and I were out there, um, and that that handled that requirement. Um, you know, and there's also just um, an update that we do to your stormwater management plan. Yeah, and it says we have to have a public meeting by June 30th, so we, we need to organize that, at least get a date for you or your people to come. Right. And that's, I mean, I think the way we've handled it in the past is we just attend one of your selectmen meetings. You give a uh, presentation. Give the presentation there. Uh, a woman. There's a public meeting requirement also for MVP, so I will be okay. in touch. The, Maybe we the, uh, wet, the wet weather meeting. investigations, so those got to be done when it's wet weather, March, April? Right. Um, yeah. Um, you know, we can start them. I, I think we just have one day's worth of um, investigations out there in the contract. Do you need a town employee to go with you? We do. Yep. Okay. So um, we, so and there's, we there's very specific weather requirements that are associated with that, which are hard to predict. Um, you know, we we watch the forecast. We look for for what's going to happen, but weather forecasts change. Um, so, you know, sometimes we have to cancel last minute because the conditions aren't what we need them to be to do the sampling. Okay, and you got the annual report done back in September, right? Correct. Uh, yep. And the retrofit planning, that's what we're talking about, year six? That's what we're talking, yeah, and I was going to mention that. It's got to be installed in year six, but we have a task in this year's contract to really, I mentioned the inventory that we did in year three, um, but what what that item is, is just to dive a little deeper and come up with a, you know, one or two preliminary design concepts for this rain garden, or if there was something you were looking to do at Fort and Burgess, um, you know, kind of take that a little bit further into the design concept, come up with a um, opinion of probable construction cost, um, you know, so that, you know, and that would form a, a better basis, you know, for coming up with a cost for that. And the quarterly SWEP inspections? Yep. They're going on, do you need a state, do you need a state employee? You need a town employee for that? Um, I typically coordinate that with Mark. Um, just let him know when I'm going to be coming out there. Um, and, you know, he's usually available, um, you know, by cell phone. I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't come out with me to the site, but, you know, he knows I'm there. Um, and that's weather contingent too, huh? Um, there is, like, one of them, one of the ones in the year is supposed to be done during a wet weather event, but, um, you know, for the most part, there's no weather dependency. So it doesn't count like if we have the fire department go out there and just hose something down. <laughs> no. No. <Okay. laughs> it's a good thought, though. Yeah, I do. Thank and actually, you. I was going to give Mark a call this week to try to schedule um, to schedule my next inspection. Um, I was planning on doing it this Thursday, but with the weather forecast looking like it would be nasty. I might try to postpone it till next week. All right. Thank so you. So the biggest thing then for the budget for next year is we need to work out mm -hmm. how much needs to be added that can't be covered by the team. That's a simple point one discussion yeah. by the board. All right. Um, we have uh, former members of the Stormwater Cabell. Yeah. <laughs> Any comments? John, Gary, Mark? I think my only comment would be that um, the scope of services that Ty and Bond provides pretty much covers the needs of the town for the fiscal year. Um, I haven't seen, obviously, I haven't seen the FY6. Um, I think that the selectmen probably would want some more detail about the catchment investigation from the standpoint of what's going to be done um, and how the dollars are allocated uh, since, it, since it appears that they have some time frame to get this done, uh, Tom. So 
So, you know, the language in the, in the scope of services, if you put that $20,000 in, just break down what what's being done. Is that a $20,000 hit for the next three years, two years, one year, or what it is? Yeah, and that was, um, you know, that was just a very off the cuff, you know, um, you know, Pam emailed me Monday afternoon last week um, and said, you know, do you have some information? So I just kind of, you know, put some rough numbers together, um, you know, in terms of what it might be to do, um, you know, a couple weeks worth of catchment investigations. But like I said, we can, we can put that off. We don't have to include that, you know, in permit year six, um, you know, especially where this, this BMP requirement, you know, if you're looking to just, you know, cut back a little bit and not spend as much on stormwater, that's an easy thing to postpone um, and not put in next year's budget and just wait. I think I'd like to see the numbers and then make it, you know, we have option one, option two, or, you know, whatever. We can okay. pick alternates. You, you might say, well, gosh, yeah. more of the side. If it's, if you pick it on this year, because next year might not be so good. Rather than pushing it off, yeah. so just let us know. Okay, yeah, I think the way um, I think the way we do our proposals with you is that you sign off on each individual item. Yes, right? yeah, yeah. Sure. So we can certainly put it in there as an item, and if you don't want to do it next year and push it off till the following year, we can revisit it when we do our year seven proposal. Or well. and, and you may be able to break it into a multiple multi-year site in catchment area say grab two out of the 10 or 15 that we have or three right. and and just do it based uh, stretch it out over a number of years right well that no, those numbers you're talking about are property so you've got about you've got about 68 outfalls in the ms4 so that's roughly 68 catchment investigations that you would have to do um you know, and typically when we go out and do them, you know, we can probably bang out seven or eight in a day. Um, you know, so we may be looking at, like I said, about maybe two weeks worth of field time being out there. Um, you know, so we could do two days over the next five years. We could do five days over two years. Um, or we could just bang it out. Um, but we can, what I, what I can do is I can put it together, assuming that we're going to do it all and just recognize that that's a, you know, that'll be our max number. And if you want to break it up, you know, and spread it out over two or three years, we can do that as well. Okay. Give us Good. A menu yep. Craig, any comments? No. I, I do have one of the pieces of the puzzle that the Stormwater Committee was looking at for FY6 is to make the business owners in town aware of their potential obligations under the MS4 program. And so um, locally, we were planning a meeting to try to get the business owners uh, at a meeting to talk about, uh, you know, parking lot sweeping, catch basin cleaning, uh, outfalls that they have that they should be considering taking care of. Um, and we were also potentially going to include uh, a couple of subdivisions that have um, stormwater programs associated with them because they also may have obligations to take care of their stormwater outlets. Um, and I don't know where that fits. Could we put that in with that public meeting if we, if we invite Are there only businesses in the MS4 in that part or all businesses? Yeah, we were only going to do the MS4 at this point. Um, and like I say, the subdivisions that fall within the, the, mm -hmm. the MS4 area. Uh, but frankly, we thought that within the next, and Tom may have a better feel, uh, in the, the future, 
the town's going to be involved, all of the town. Stormwater will, as Bob was saying about the feds, they continuously push the envelope. And they don't care that we've spent probably 150000 yeah. in the last few years on, on complying. Um, but in this particular case, anyway, we are just looking at the industry. Uh, we do have an issue with the Scantic River, though. Tom, I think you're aware of the, the uh, new regulations that are coming down because the Scantic empties into Long Island Sound. And the TMDLs that are uh, that are looking at the Scantic River for so that's something else, a little side from uh, what we've got here, but that also encompasses the town. So mm -hmm. they're they're crawling in. Right. Gary, what's the penalty for non-compliance? Not completed within the six-year time frame. There. I'm sorry. Is there a penalty for non-compliance within that time there frame? Absolutely is. Um, Every year, uh, Ty and Bond has been submitting a, an annual report. And Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but and, and it hasn't happened. I mean, the, the feds are behind, the state's behind in, in enforcement. But my understanding is under NPDES, it's probably at least $2,000 a day um, if they ever decided to drop the hammer. Um, it's, it's way out there, though. I mean, because you look at some of these surrounding towns, Ham, Hamden, is in a much more positive role with their MS4 program than many towns mm -hmm. um, of similar size around here. So mm -hmm. um, they would be get, they'd be the first in line mm -hmm. with what the town's been spending, the taxpayers have been spending here. I think uh, you know we're way down the list of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Anything else, John? So, um, I think. Going forward, or looking forward, I think you're going to have there's going to be more reporting and more requirements and efforts. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. really, the business owners need to file something where you're going to keep those records, how you're going to keep them. So, those are some of the things that looking forward we're mm -hmm. going to have to uh, figure out. Yeah, one other thing for, I mean, Tom probably can speak to this as well. Um, the town is reviewed under a SWIP. We have a number of projects here in town that are under, should be under stormwater permit, probably are, and are under SWIPs. And reporting on SWIPs should be coming into the town from these projects. Um, what is it, a quarter inch of rain and the contractor is supposed to uh, at least keep records of erosion control measures, uh, how the site is stabilized, those kind of mm -hmm. things. And at this point, that's not happening as far as I know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly Ty and Bond isn't responsible. They, they you know, under their contract at all. Mm -hmm. town is, mm -hmm. you know, for keeping an eye on these projects um, and and making certain that each of these larger projects have construction managers who are keeping an eye on and hopefully have filed a SWIP. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure we have, what, three, four solar projects going? No, but those are only the ones that are in the MS4? I mean, so, oh, no. or it's all projects? Oh, no. Uh, the, SWIPs, the SWIPs cover... Um, all projects disturbing more than an acre. Okay. Right. Um, so something like the construction up at the landfill would be a prime example. Absolutely. Right. And okay. and if you go on the EPA website, you start mm -hmm. looking for their permit numbers to see whether or not they filed. Mm -hmm. And under if they did, then there is a document mm -hmm. that, that they're supposed to be going by, including you know letting the town have inspection reports and those mm -hmm. kind of data. So yeah, John, we'll, this is a completely separate issue from her right. at the Absolutely. MS4. Absolutely. This is a this is a town as opposed to is, MS4. This is more issue. management issue inside the it town. Is, it is a local okay. issue. All right, so I know Tom's got another uh, meeting, so sorry, uh, we, Tom. No, it's all right. It's so you're gonna prepare some pricing for us so we can look over. Yeah, I'll put together I'll put together a proposal for our services for year six. Um, you know, but again, the 
kind of the tricky one is this demonstration retrofit BMP because you know for like construction of it that's not going to be us but you'd still want to budget for that right. um, so we'll try to come up with some at least rough budget numbers um, at this point like I said we have a task in our year five contract to refine that and you know be a little more like go to the site come up with a you know a, a detailed design and cost estimate that will refine that number, but we can certainly come up with something rough that you can use for budgeting. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Is there a certain time that you would need our proposal by? Well, it doesn't have to be this week. Friday's fine. Next week, I mean, we are preparing a budget right now, Tom. So yep, yep. I know you want to. You're going to chat with uh, Bob, who's going to chat with Steve, and get a sense of how we can coordinate these two different programs together. So that'd be good. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, it, for our services, you know, we can certainly put something together, and then figuring out how this um, this BMP gets paid for. Well, this would be part of the budget we'd be able to advisory, and we're supposed to be in there sometime in March. Do you know when? So at most two weeks, I would say. All right, we'll shoot to get you something next week. Sounds good, that would work out fine. Okay. All right, sir. All right, do you have anything else for me? Nope, break a leg. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. All right, so that's interesting. Uh, that's something I think we should uh, have a chance to talk with Wendell about for that. Actually, there's a good opportunity I mentioned to the board that uh, we have a on-site review of what's happening up at the landfill scheduled for next Thursday. Good opportunity to talk to both Wendell and the operator of the construction. See, who's doing this report? Well, I know they've been doing it. So, yeah, it, 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 it's I, I, that's I hesitate, one of the I hesitate to lay that on Wendell. No, no, but I'm saying it's the largest part of probably ongoing in town right now. Sure. I would anticipate Amoresco would be well aware of the, the amount of fields they've been doing in, in Massachusetts. They know that's required. Yeah, and, yeah. and they very well, but they also may not, again, it, it comes down to how they wrote their script mm -hmm. and the report, but most SWIFTs are written with the idea that the town is, it's their town, receive the um, monthly, bi-monthly, bi-annually reports mm -hmm. of construction um, with regard to stormwater. And any time, as I say, a quarter inch of rain falls, that construction supervisor is supposed to document that he took a walk around right. and made sure that everything was secure. Major issues that come up because of major rainstorms, mm -hmm. for sure, they're on the hook for it. And, and that Tom does it for the town to give in the annual report under the MS4 program. Mm -hmm. But if, let's say, the landfill had a major washout, then the town DP would get involved, obviously, possibly an EPA people, but probably not. But the town would be drawn into this because you are the landlord. So yeah, it, it would behoove uh, to know who's the, the mm -hmm. supervisor and sure. what they're doing. Okay. Thank you. So, and Bob, so you're going to touch base with Steve Tyler. Let's get a sense if we can make the, sure it'd be nice if that grant well, could underwrite most of that cost. Next week as well. Hmm? And report back next week as right, well. Right, if we could, if that grant could underwrite most of that cost, that'd be a, right. a bit of a win, mm -hmm. so. All right, next on the agenda is fire department budget. Ed. Welcome, Chief. 
So you guys out doing some kind of training yesterday? I saw on Facebook, or what was that? Just some cold water, ice suit, donning goggles, pump training. It's that was not unusually not... warm. So we <laughs> yeah, some... right. It's not as icy cold. as you wanted, right? Yeah. yeah we take some opportunities to train. Okay, that was at Mill Pond. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. Quickly, how are our dry hydrants doing? All in good shape, or? Um, they're they're doing pretty well. Um, the one we do have an issue with. Uh, Summers Road Bridge. Mm. Um, traditionally, we have a cold weather. They don't um, always hold a suction prime. Um, but whenever source went through, they did not directly remount our dry hydrant to the guardrail. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm in uh, contact with them to have them come back out and take care of that. Yeah, well, we already heard earlier at the meeting how great utilities respond to Hamden. We got poll on Main Street, so <laughs> good luck. What about that one right here across the way that's been above water for a long time? That is still above water, unfortunately. The dam. Right, because the dam broke. Uh, it's all about water level there. Is it ability to go lower? Is there enough water there to even utilize if it was lower in the ground? <clears throat> if we were to, to move, I think we'd have to cross the other side of the river okay. and go down the other um, mm -hmm. side of the bridge to get a deeper spot where we could. And I think somebody asked one time, could we dig a hole and create a pit for it? And like, same question. You're digging a hole in a river. Corps of Engineers, you can dig the hole for $500 and you're permitted for $500,000. Mm -hmm. Right, Bob? Right. Even if you, even if you dig a hole, um, the silt and stuff. Right. So you'd have to like, water, again, yeah. Basically, you'd be putting a cistern in gonna, that's going to fill. The silt, right. so yeah. yeah. There is a spot up close to the road as well where, where Eastbrook comes into the scan pick. Um, where we can get a line in there. Mm -hmm. um, there happens just to be a rock in the center there that will catch our, our strainer. You know, the current, if we try to do a floating dock, it, it wants to, you know, go with the current. Mm -hmm. So it's a good point there that we can't actually enter the, the river. So the, the best one is what? Rock Dundee, basically? Because that's always pretty well. Yeah, Rock yeah. Dundee is always, always good. Yeah. 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 Is mill usable? No, no, that's what we used last night. It yeah. tests out, works, works well. Mm. Okay. Well, it looks like according to your budget, the fire department would like uh, money again this year. Sorry. What? Sorry. <laughs> um, for operations, we were asking for 5% increase just because the cost of everything is skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's not a lot because our operating budget number is, is my opinion, low for the services the fire department gives the town. Um, but again, the cost, the availability of things is, is just gone skyrocketing. Okay. And if we didn't have the grants that we've been awarded and mm -hmm. applied for, we'd be in a lot worse shape. Eversource, uh, of course, we have Eversource for uh, gas, natural gas for heating the fire department. Yeah, I'm looking at the online thing and I think the yeah I think the the spreadsheet that's in the OneDrive is a little messed up compared to what is in the folder is the one in the folder the most up to date with a number of 226 228 no yes we sent on the, uh, the, no. on, the on the firefighter on the firefighter EMT thing that you did the four percent. I didn't do the math there. And in yeah. in the last time we we talked, that uh, two of them weren't EMTs. Are they moving towards that, or are they? Um, one is the EMT. Yeah. The other one has completed his course, has kind of, um, passed the state test. And he's just scheduled to do his practical test. Um, so he should be within a month. Mm -hmm. right. cool. And the third position is usually just. Yeah. Um, Build the EMP or higher level paramedic. And the and so and then you went from four hours with the clerk administrator to fifteen hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. This one the folder says just uh, school year twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. On the one drive says twenty two too. Yeah. So you have other copies of twenty four. We don't have to get copies of twenty four. Yep. Copy that I received went into the OneDrive. Hmm? Thank you. Right. Okay. 
yesterday. Yeah, I'm trying to get a sense of why it's 46. Is that like better? No, not really. Um, only because the the total for appropriated 23 is an actual is in the actual total. They don't get the shells filled in. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the approval. Yeah. yeah, the appropriate 23. But I mean, you're going from 46,000 to 240,000. It's just a pick up an increase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not that you're not worth it. Um, don't get us wrong. So, if you could summarize, if I'm trying to get a sense here, if you look yeah. at the requested, did you basically the salary lines go up by four percent? Right. Same as everyone else. So you took the the advisory recommendation was to select board endorsed of the four percent cola. Yeah. Okay. And that's for the three full time firefighters. Yeah. Okay. The shift coverage of ten thousand. Again, we don't see last year's on this. Was that there before? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so that didn't change. So that totals up showing here at 181, which represent a rough 4% increase from last year. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Fire chief, you went up 4%? Yes. Officers? And then now back to Don's question. Okay, back to you. I just want to get some time. The clerical. Wait, okay. from four to 15 hours. <clears throat> so, uh, our current administrator um, is leaving June 30th. She'll have to be replaced um, as a number that we put in there for budget reasons. Um, we don't know who, I haven't advertised. I know Jane works more than four hours a week. She volunteers a lot of her time for the town. We appreciate that. But I don't think we'll find someone else to do that. Hmm. And, and what does the clerk administrator do? Um, well, they, you know, like, once, what do you do? I work oh. hard, darn it. <laughs> so, roughly, so roughly that's four hours, at, well, Let's call it three hours a day, a five day week. So, yeah. that's no, I'm not. Well, do you do, I, I do time cards for them or reports? Yes, I make it. sure that all the grant monies are accounted for, mm -hmm. all the bookkeeping as far as that goes. I do all the. Like the permit fees when they go in. Yes. Yeah. All the deposits, all the payrolls, um, all their hours that they put in. Mm -hmm. I make sure that their hours meet what they're really working. Well, I a, can check it's a it. clerical right. thing. Yeah, it's, clerical. it's all clerical. Now, when you say deposits, what do you mean? From the permitting fees? Yeah. I have to do the deposit slips for this and flip. They, the, the treasurer and the collector don't do the deposit slips? No. Not for, for any of the town any department. Department board, no. Why? Beats me. I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, they don't. They I never have. It's, it's probably a bit of a check. I, goes to the bank. I believe it's a bit of a check and balance. Now they don't. Well, if you touch the money, second set of eyes on it. But that's the way. I will say, Don, it's the way it's always been. But I think it's a. If you go back to Scanlon's report, it's never been something they've flagged. Yeah, no. no, never. They've no. always been happy with it. The right. Time. I'm not saying I'm just not like happy you. With no, it, I, I know. Just, I know. just like saving with the transfer station, you bring the money in. And then turn I, mean, it all I put it all in yeah. deposits. So my treasurer at home never lets me touch the money <laughs> or the checkbook. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> I was just wondering. No, this is new what, to me. what it looks like. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, they, they count on me to do that. Permission slip. So, so that's, so that's, you're looking for a realistic number now for a new, not a, a change in number, but a real, realistic number for the hours that the job takes. Correct. All right. Okay. Well, and yeah, that's sure. at a the lowest level. That's at the lowest grade least, number. Okay. Grade three, step one. Yes. Well, let me ask you this yes. question. It says here that the uh, FEMA AFG F21 cross truck awarded committee is still working on final details. What do, what do we got to do there? For final details. Yeah. Final details are we just have a rough draft of the truck. Um, what the truck committee has needs to do would be to clear up any last small adjustments and order a truck. And you you file that with you, does, it, does FEMA have to get that, or is it or is it with the truck dealer? 
Uh, it's with the truck dealer. Okay. Right. So the FEMA thing's already all done. They're just waiting to get them. Right. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're going to um, be ordering the truck hopefully in a month or so. I would say. So that money think? we need from the town is we just don't have that amount? Then we need to kick some money in for that? Yeah, about 11000 11, somewhere down there. All right. So Do we have a hard done. number on that soon. Like we can, I think it will depend on how much the truck actually costs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once we nail that, you know, once the salesman says it's this much money, then there's we'll a percentage. Is so, that it? Yeah. yeah. The best thing to do is make it a warrant or if it doesn't expire. Yeah. So yeah. the uh, put a placeholder on for that, at least in a so sense there, that there, I'm there guessing two, you're talking not over fifty. Have, right. Uh, okay. For budget notes, one is to renovate an engine two, and you're asking for ten thousand. And the other is for a new dump. And I, no, that's the highway department. I'm sorry. The other, the, the new truck. So we'll do both for a, a wire. Separate. I have the. I Let have me ask you this here. question while we got you here. Sure. Can I? Uh, um, let's just run through the other numbers okay. and bring up the, okay. So I show, and these are just the ones you put in a minor increase, especially operations, i.e. utilities. Obviously the fire station is not covered by the PPA. Uh, so increases are just increases. Um, you're looking at it monthly right now. How is your electric compared to everybody else's? Mine has gone up, I don't know, 35% in the past three months. It is definitely. Yeah. It's definitely gone up, I, but I mean, obviously, the natural gas bill is the highest. Mm -hmm. the large bill in heat and insulation is not, you know, not well. Mm -hmm. the doors or windows, but the training um, is everybody pretty much taking advantage of that. You would say training. The training training stipend, training. you know, so everybody. Yeah. So attendance is good. Training is is attendance is good. Um, we, the training, if you're referring to. And then, of course, paying out the stipend. I know some people in the past just, you know, look, I'm happy to go for training. You don't have to pay me. So sometimes you return a little bit. Yeah, there's a few few people that either you know, make make a training because they're working, or there's a few that just don't. Right. So is that the number hasn't gone up? Right. It's a flat number. and. It's a it's a flat number because stipends have to match hourly hourly pay. So mm -hmm. if the firefighters are making twenty dollars an hour, they have to, their hours have to work out to whatever the stipend would be. Okay. So you know if you were to raise their hourly wage, then we would have to raise the stipend basically match the call number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The training stipend. Are you looking to change the call reimbursement? I'm looking to, to, for the call reimbursement, I would like to make it a two hour minimum call. So if we have a, a call, smells and bells sort of thing, whether someone burnt toast or something. Um, I'm sorry, go back, go back. I missed that little, yeah. what'd you call it? Smells and bells. I smell something or a fire alarm going off. Okay. Um, <laughs> So if if it's going to be a short call, it's it's you know it's to motivate people to to show up. We still need, you still need a response. I don't have a you know right now I don't have a problem, but for recruitment and retention, I'm trying to be creative and come up with some things. Mm -hmm. So if we could do a two hour minimum call, which is not a lot, other area departments are doing more than that. Mm -hmm. um, it would get um, at least they would receive forty dollars for the call instead of twenty dollars. If it goes over two hours and it's a larger fire and it just carries out on regular. Mm -hmm. What's the minimum now? No, no one hourly. Hour. One hour? One hour. One hour. Just, yeah. Mm -hmm. They show up for 15 minutes, they get paid for it. And we have the money in the budget to do that. It wouldn't be an increase. Um, it wouldn't be an increase on that line item. There's money there. Okay. Well, I guess I'll, I'll game that out then. Who sets that policy? 
I guess I could set the policy, but I would want the approval of the board. Right. You know, I'm like trying to think, you know, you, right now it's a, you know, it was Mike's policy before yours or it's been that way for a while. It's, it's been that way for five years, six years. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe once and Don um, helped me out, I believe you, the, the money that was first allocated yeah. for the call fire department was a large number. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, was, reduced yeah, it, by it was like 50,000. Yeah. Right, because yeah. we were looking at the uh, appropriated versus expended, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right, yeah. and there's still money left left in there from last, that wasn't left in there last year. Mm -hmm. And again, to be creative to keep people in trust in the fire department mm -hmm. um, and coming, I thought that we could do a small gesture would be a two hour minimum call. Right, you so. Know. You said other communities are doing similar. Do you know who around here is doing something similar? Well, so, there, you know, call departments are harder and harder to find. Okay. Um, one since the closest, they either do a three or four, I believe. Plus, I think they pay people to just be on mm -hmm. call for the night. So, so I could check that and get more information. So at 50,000, that's 2,500 2, hours in call. And hour wise, you're not running that much on a yearly basis, or you? No, I, I believe you can. I think we have probably just under 30 in there now left. And I think we have 30,000 left now in the budget, and it's February. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, but you can't just say, oh, I'm going to make it two hour minimum because you don't know what percentage of that has been one hour calls to this point. You know, it could oh, be that we went back through 40% could have been over two hours anyhow, so it wouldn't change them. Right. I mean, the best mm. thing in the world, um, Chairman, is that if we can schedule <laughs> fire calls Monday through Friday, knowing that we'd have one or two a week, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't have that option. Um, we, we could be inundated with fire calls, sure. hopefully not. Um, but through, we went back um, the previous year and we went through this year so far, mm -hmm. and we averaged out and it comes out to the um, just under our amount that we have budgeted now for the call department. Okay. So for clarification, are, should we begin the process of setting or creating a position, a clerical position? Well, we have a clerical position. They're just looking to increase We're just going to upgrade it. We're not going to. Well, don't we have well, a description of it from the um, Collins people anyhow? Yeah. Well, no. We do. No. No. So we're not going to consider it a separate position. We're just going to upgrade it. Well, this is, it's just happened to be we have one person filling two positions. Yeah, right. So splitting it off. And if the board is comfortable with the number of hours that the, the chief recommends is kind of our question. I understand the point is that it would make it easier. I think as chief said, easier to advertise and fill. And as Jane has said, with the experience of being in the job for 15 years, she certainly understands the, the needs of the role. And I think actually the Collins people were quite surprised that it was listed as four hours when they looked at the amount of work that was being done. Yeah, there's more than four hours oh, being yeah. right. devoted to this sure. now. Yeah. So now maybe there's an opportunity. I think Don has talked this, about this before of consolidating a couple of things. Okay, well, this person takes this. Who's to say they may not want to take a oh, highway clerical for 10 on top of that or advisory is still looking for a clerk and you get into one job for who's to say and now somebody look i really didn't want a 15 hour job well if you take these three there's 30 hours that'll be something coming back to the board at that point at the end of january you had uh 33,864 in your call we probably used up some of that. Yeah. yeah. But again, kind of my point was how much of that as a percentage was one hour calls? You yeah. really can't tell. Because yeah. if bulk of them were over two, it wouldn't have changed it. So if you're saying, well, there were 70 one hour calls in there, so that would have just jumped it up not much. So you can't just say, well, we're going to double them all. But, but don't overthink this. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, so I, do, I do. Where's I do. our new truck? I do. I have a question. Yes, sir. In a perfect world, in a perfect world, you'll see the fire department in five years. Still on, still on North Road. Oh, yeah, still on <laughs> North Road with the new station. <laughs> like a whole new station, uh, different operations. It's, it's, it's whatever the select board wishes. I mean, the the fire chief I, I does serve underneath the board. I, I understand. I understand so that, but I'm at your but you will get to do what what you would like me to but do. But you you, you must have some vision or when you you know in the middle of the night like me and i'm up at three o'clock in the morning honestly doing my rowing machine and i say you know i think TMI. this will aggravate flynn i'll, I'll send this email <laughs> tmi <out>. done <laughs> honestly Do a couple extra rows done. truthfully i'm happy to serve the town i'm happy to be part of it um and i'll take whatever the town wants to get i i'm not looking to promote i'm not looking i'm Seriously, I'm happy with that. No, I just, I, you know, because, you know, we're going through this whole... You yeah, know. the great group of people up there, they're really um, bonding together. Uh, so I'm, it's, it's really nice to see, and it's really mm -hmm. nice to go out and help people. It's a good feeling. So if anybody wants to join the fire department, you can do so online. <laughs> he puts the plug in. I'm looking, thank <laughs> you. So we're looking forward to, speaking of that, looking forward to March 1st is the... Round of the uh, next, public next, session. next public yes. session. And again, we really need to advertise that. 7 p.m. Oh, yes. I'm, oh, I'm yes. just saying, you know, the five people on Zoom, I'm pretty sure, are coming already. But we got to get that note out through the school, some posters around town, something. That's just Facebook next week. Next, next week, week. Yeah. Wednesday. Right. Yep. And has anything gone to the school? Now they're on break. So uh, now you're Robo putting it out. As well. <laughs> now you're Robo putting it out well. Monday, the day they're back, two days before the event. We could get a sandwich board and Pam could walk around town with it, you know, like. You're retired. You do it. <laughs> She's working. <All> right. <laughs> town needs to restore the old town crier. It's you right. Walk around right. Ring a bell. Next, you'll be asking for the stocks. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Chief, anything All right. else? Anything more from the board? There is one more item down there um, added for training, the $2,500. It's not Training on account. Yes. Where? That's, was that on there last year, though? It was not on there last year. Oh. Um, Selectman Davenport suggested it last year. And I said I would, you know, I thought we were okay last year's budget, but I would look at it this year. So it was added into it this year. For explain, explain it. So we've had um, what the training, hell was I thinking? <laughs> we've had training companies come out, man versus machine. Um, they'll, they'll come out and walk us through some training things we mm -hmm. could occur. Um, interested in doing, you know, some electric cars. Yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. right, right, right. Solar right. yep. things, yep. stuff yep. like that. Yeah. Um, and, and also um, some things we need to build props for, for mm -hmm. uh, roof, um, extra, uh, ventilation, sure. things like that. We can okay. Use that training them. I just don't know if it if if the accountant wants it as a separate line item or if he'd put it in operations. It's one question I would have. Well, I think it's easier to track if it's a separate line yeah, like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I mean, if Don asked for it, what were we to say? No, I, I thought he was um, dead on with that. Yeah, good. Anything you, else? The, the the foam for electric car fires. Uh, with, the, with the PFAS chemicals, yeah. don't they want dunk tanks? Is it really? You know, you saw those articles. It takes you know, yes. twenty thousand, thirty thousand yeah. gallons of water to put those things out. Yeah. Yes. That's not. You sent those articles, and I've I've seen um, two or three others, and and they're in Massachusetts happening. Oh. So, yep. mm. are they crash related, or are they just? The ones that you had seen there, just spontaneous. Some, some are and some aren't. Some were um, just parked there and started. Others were definitely damaged. Is there any specific car like a Mustang or anything that's prone to that type of thing? Teslas. Not Mustangs, Bob? The ones that I've Mustangs seen have major battery issues right now. <laughs> in the, at least the newspaper articles are Teslas. 
That is the most popular brand as well. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't right. know if that has any. Yeah, yeah well, right. There's more of them than. I never right. parked my car next to his. <laughs> I, th I think Ford has a recall on the batteries too. Do they really? Did you get a recall? Get a. Did you get a recall? No, he, no, no. Well, no. no. all right. Yeah. Thank you. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Selectman budgets. Uh, we reviewed the selectman's budget again today. Um, the one missing piece right now is property and liability, and Pam has been in touch with our, our insurance company yeah. two or three times. Yeah, we should have the number from the one on Thursday. Mm -hmm. He's reaching out to people who usually contact, but um, we'll also reach out to others. <coughs> the number for employee benefits is a hard number uh, from the town treasurer. Is that number in Include the potential payouts at retirement? Yes, it does. Um, <clears throat> stormwater, we need to put something in there. We need right? something in stormwater. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and we're going to stick with the gasoline? Huh? It's yeah. work for us. It seems to work, right? right. I mean, that's not a bad number left over right no, now. No, so, no. I mean, it gets out of the, uh, they change over from the winter mix. Uh, I think Jim might remember. It's like March. April. Or remember they have that uh, winter mix. They go through the 10% uh, solution. And they, have to, they have to empty the tanks and switch over to it like by the end of April or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maintenance is what it is. You haven't made a decision on ambulance service, but I put the number in there. That... Yeah. The working number. Okay. You sure that emergency management number is right? Which one? Emergency management number is right? Yes. Um, they didn't go, really. I know they hit us with a big installation charge, but I thought they also had an increase in the yearly charge over the rave people. No? That's the number that I, I asked for about 10 days ago, and that's mm -hmm. the number that came back. Okay. Transfer station testing. It's a big number. A big one. And that's an estimate. Um, that's a PFAS. Yeah. Uh, Craig, I'll have more of that in a little. You want to do that today or next week? You're going to have more information yeah. on uh, where we stand with the PFAS testing and remediation. Uh, nothing has changed since our last conversation with um, our water operator. And okay. Yeah. Okay. Even if I think, even if they came up with a solution. I don't think it's going to, well, I'll take it back. The number you see there is next year's thing, which may or may not, depending on what the solution they come up with. The problem we have right now is paying the bill inside the current yeah, year. Right. Right. Yeah. right. yeah, that's what yeah. Bob said he was looking for that. Was that a one stop or whatever? The one stop, that grant? For the current bill or for, ne for any improvement in the district? One stop. I think that was our current bill. Uh, we've we've applied for two. two. Yeah, there was two separate allocations, right? Yes. But would the money come before June thirtieth? Um, unlikely, but maybe. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going to make their decisions sometime in May, and can they get money out the door? Probably not. No. Unlikely. No, I mean, because yeah. one, you're going for a potential solution to yes. further testing, and that's great. That could be next year. Right. The other one, though, we're going to have a budget shortfall with right. the testing bills from whatever, right. and mm -hmm. gosh, done. Did we talk about ARPA we for that? Was yeah. ARPA qualified for that testing? Was ARPA qualified for that testing? Government service. Yes. yes. Yeah, I think okay. that would. Yeah. 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 At least cover that shortfall well, for the year. Yeah, two things. It's government service and it's water. Yeah. Yeah. Protection of water supply. P PWS, yeah. 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 Use the money we save from the railing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we, we might have to go that route then. That's just a plan. Yeah, we're still uh, almost 600000 unallocated. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Mm. Okay. All right, so the selection budget is in, constantly evolving, basically, evolving. Evolving. I noticed in tonight's bills, there's 
They must be doing the testing, PFAS testing. Was it in there? Yeah. I haven't looked at them yet. Pace analytic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in there. Huge. Yeah. First four well, houses. Yeah, they, they're doing it by house. So each, each house so is what's going to trickle in. And then you said there's three tests in the river plus the landfill test. And it's, you know. Yeah, there's yeah. 10, 11, 11 total tests, I think. Good business. Four times okay. a year. Okay, next ambulance. So, how do we want to do this? Does the board want to discuss this among itself? Don, you've got some notes on a piece of paper. Well, I. Do you have a date or time on that? Was that two in the morning, three in the morning? Uh, I don't remember on this one. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, may I jump in for a second? Yes. You may. I um, got some stuff I'd like to bring out and open public meeting yeah. and um, some stuff I'd like to talk about so we can generate some conversation Go ahead. and I just want to set the record straight that uh, I take this job seriously I put a lot of research into the topics I educate myself on the materials that come in front of us as a board and for anybody in public service I think we can all agree that this job doesn't start and end at the meetings here it's 24 7 365 and a lot of times it can be relentless you know Don's up at three in the morning, you know, rowing and doing work. So, I mean, <laughs> give props to that. Now, I was originally going to brush this off and not, not bring it up, but I um, had some time to reflect over the weekend and uh, feel like I need to defend myself and my reputation and my character. Um, there was some inflammatory and disrespectful comments by a member of the Ambulance Oversight Committee, personally aimed at me using straw man tactics to discredit me and minimize my concerns. And it's just downright ridiculous, not called for. And if anybody's curious what I'm talking about, you can go watch the video on Zoom. It's there for everybody to see. I take great pride in what I do, and I think I bring a sense of skepticism and optimism to this board. And I feel my recommendations for amendments to the contract were not some willy-nilly cut rate off the cuff approach to create division. They were actually thought out and calculated. They're designed to engage conversation and create talking points on topics that we've neglected over the years. We have this opportunity right now to make this town better. And my opinion, by amending the language in the contract renewal, I was hoping that by kicking the, my suggestions back to the Ambulance Oversight Committee, that they would brainstorm and possibly offer some true oversight and constructive suggestions. However, what I saw in that meeting was a lot of closed-minded approach and no willingness to provide actual oversight. So I got a lot more to say. I'm just going to cut it there. Appreciate that. I also uh, watched the meeting. I think, uh, Don, you were online as well for that? No. Oh, wasn't you? No. Okay. Did you ever have a chance to watch the video? I watched it this afternoon. Popcorn? No, no just watched it. Okay. Um, I will say it wasn't the, the type of meeting I enjoyed watching, but we do appreciate everybody who volunteers for positions. Uh, this is many jobs in this town people volunteer for because they want to make him them better. And I don't think that could be stated strongly enough. So from that standpoint, however, there's no room for any personal attacks in town government. Bottom line, we started the ambulance oversight committee to provide oversight of how the contract has been implemented. And I'd like to see them stay with that role. I wasn't happy with some of the things that were stated at the meeting. Um, I think Craig's suggestions, which we saw a copy of, were good suggestions. It's what we do. That's our job. And I think a, a reasonable discussion of them was warranted. I'll leave it at that, Don. You can throw some comments in. I, when I watched it this afternoon, I have to say that I thought it was unfair to Craig. Uh, he made, we, we asked him to make some suggestions. He did. I wrote a letter. Uh, they didn't send it to the board because they didn't want to have deliberation violating the open meeting law. And basically, I just outlined why I thought on the one specific uh, thing. 
without commenting on what your suggestions were. I do have to say this though, that we're in an era, <clears throat> we're in an era of, of um, uh, the conspiracy theorists that there's a deep, the deep state is doing this. There's a manipulation. There's a secret meetings being held. There's people talking behind everyone's back. It doesn't happen in this town that I know of. Uh, and, you know, sometimes people's motives are people with their honest motives. And as Sigmund Freud once said, a cigar is a cigar. In this particular case, the cigar that's a cigar is that we have to decide whether they're going to re, where they were going to renew the con where would they extend the contract with action ambulance to provide services as they have uh and i believe in a professional manner for pennies a day for the for the people in town and uh i would i would make that motion right now that we extend the you know <clears throat> that we approve a one-year extension of the contract signed with Action Ambulance on 6 11 20, 20. Uh, Is that an official would, motion, or are you stating that as a recommendation that you would consider that? That's an official motion. Okay, you, can sec you, can, you can second that for purposes of discussion. At the discussion. recommended rate. I will second that for purposes of discussion. Okay. <clears throat> so let's discuss. Um, Obviously, I think some of the deficiencies in the you know, operation and reporting, and I know you're over there and just, just listen, we're not looking for comment per se at this point. And I think what you've said in previous meetings has been well stated. You know there's been things that haven't gone perfectly. We're all aware of the problems and you're working for a solution. And I think we saw that in the meeting if we were to renew, renew this contract, I think we'd want to be 100% confident that last year is not going to be next year. And that's what we want. I will now, say just Craig on top has, of that. Craig has suggested some ways that the contract we think could be improved and maybe reporting could be improved. And so, go on with My recommendations aren't merely for action but for our discussion points, because we've neglected as a community and as a, a leadership mm -hmm. to follow through on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So to bring them up in the contract is to bring them up in light of, we need more discussion on this. Right. I, I will say, I appreciate the emails, the, the response times that you've been sending out. I, I think if anything, that's a win, you know, mm -hmm. that helps us and I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So it's been great. Um, but I feel there's some things there, some language to bring discussions on one that the town needs to do a better job at implementing what's in the contract making sure it's adhered to mm -hmm. and action is obviously they're willing to help too mm -hmm. so to me it was two points uh reporting there was a breakdown in reporting i think we can summarize it at that there was definitely a breakdown in reporting coverage we're aware of your issues everybody's been having issues you've said clearly to the ambulance committee last week you want to fix it. You're working hard to fix personnel. You're working hard to fix lapses in ALS coverage. Correct? Okay. And that's what I assume would have come out if the oversight committee was giving oversight reports, that's what we would have heard of. I think reporting going forward, we want to adhere to what's in the contract we see gaps in how the contract has been followed is how we want to be and is there a way we can improve that i'm not saying we're not looking for a wholesale change in the contract at all done no we're fairly confident that we drafted something pretty strong three years ago i, I, I think i think the way we we improve it is that we pay attention to it right uh, i don't i don't think i agree with greg we haven't done that as a board. Uh, well, we left the two, you know, we assume that reports were coming in to our, our daily staff and they weren't. And right. we so talked we, last week and you were going to improve that. So we've, we've, we've improved that. And then I think the board has to just make sure we get those reports and then we Correct. can, we can take action. Right. We were getting the monthly reports. Yeah. I have a, 
uh, big file. I know. And well, we weren't we, getting. We, we weren't were, getting the discrepancy reports, and that's, that's right. What, right. That's, which were supposed to be we reviewed right. by either the police right. chief or the fire chief, and there's a right. different right. discussion about that. But neither one had an opportunity. Well, I think we have to be careful too with the reports. Is that we don't just send them to everybody. Willy nilly. Willy nilly. That right. you know that they don't have any authority or can't mm -hmm. do anything about it. Sure. A and B, we don't overburden uh, action ambulance because they're supposed to be ser servicing patients, not mm -hmm. <laughs> servicing us with reports. <laughs> I had no well, confidence that the reports were coming in. And if you're going to put them in the one drive, and then as Don said, we can see them at our leisure and they're not filling our inbox, but they're in a place we can access and review when we need to. I just didn't have a confidence level that reports were being generated and sent to the board. And certainly, the exception things, if, honestly, if I hadn't heard it from Tony, I would never have been aware that we're having an ALS, BLS problem. No. It, if it was coming to you or Pam or Scotty or Ed, I don't think it ever came well, to us. While you're on that point, John, I don't yeah. want to say, Greg was really the one that brought it to our attention back on September 1st. Because he heard about it either yeah. from Tony or maybe the scanner Tony. or something like that. Live in person. Live, Live in person, if you will. And, yeah. and, and there was a reference that the selectmen have ignored this issue. The selectmen haven't ignored the issue. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it at numerous meetings. We've had meetings with Action Ambulance on numerous occasions. Mm -hmm. There was a meeting on November 3rd with the fire chief, the police chief, mm -hmm. the action ambulance, myself, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess three people from action ambulance. Yeah. And it was a good, it was a very frank and candid meeting. Mm -hmm. And they worked very hard. And if you look at today's latest reports for February, you know, there's only been four instances of non-coverage, 12-hour mm -hmm. coverage. So they're improving. Oh, Non-ALS coverage. Non-ALS always been coverage. Improving. Always been right. coverage, right. The other thing I should point out, too, is that, you know, <clears throat> the mutual aid thing is all a part of this, too. Mm -hmm. In October, November, December, the Hamden Fire, the Hamden Action Ambulance provided mutual aid 49 times to East Long Meadow. Mm -hmm. They only had to come here 14 times. You know, so it's a system that's working. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it would behoove us to make sure the system keeps working. And I, and I agree, we need to be more responsive to mm -hmm. the 10-minute the time, and we need to be more responsive to the ALS, BLS stuff. One well, of the things that came out at the Ambulance Advisory Committee meeting was that uh, the company was having some issues with data, and that uh, it was mentioned, uh, and ask him to confirm that in 45 days there's been one incident where uh, the ten minutes. response time exceeded mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? You know, and I think we need, if we're going to do the 10 minute thing, then we're going to need to have to have some guidelines uh, amongst ourselves what that means. I don't think we can just go by, I don't think we can just go by weather and traffic. Other things happen. If they're mm -hmm. coming back from the hospital or they're coming back from East Long Meadow and they get a call, mm -hmm. you know, it might be 10 minutes to get to Glendale Road. And I think that will go a long way of saying maybe they're listing as available too soon if they're too far away at that point. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a possibility. When do they have to list their available? As soon as they... They as soon typically as... will <clears throat> call available when they clear the emergency room, but we also rely on the rec too because we opened our GPS system to them, yeah. so they can tell where our truck physically is. Okay, so the Wilbraham yeah. Regional yeah, so we give the... can tell where you are any, we, any time they, of the day. Right, and they can make a determination in terms of which would be the closest unit. And there's, a, and there's a trust level there. Yesterday in East Long Meadow, coming through the rotary, there's the action from him then going downtown. Now I'm not calling over, okay, who's covering him then now? because you're heading to the hospital. The rule there is that what, you vector another vehicle towards Hamden? Yeah, you rely on mutual aid? Yesterday and we end up picking up a second call yesterday. Uh, as the data showed this morning, that was identified as the Med 2 truck. So that does happen. So the truck A goes out, then a backup will come in um, to cover. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's available, sometimes it's not. But when it is, that helps the system out. Um, so at what point is it vectored in, just for me? So you've responded to a call. Heck, like the one outside of Village Food Mart. Right. 
boom, you know you're going to be taking somebody. At that point, do you put the call out, hey, I better get some coverage in Hamden, or not until they've actually loaded somebody and left town, does the call go out? So it'll depend. Um, if it depends sometimes how the call comes in. If it's sometimes a classified, let's say someone's fallen, they can't get up, they need to lift up, mm -hmm. they won't typically send a truck to cover sure. because it will probably clear. Uh, clear right there. That's yeah, right. right. So, yeah. so it's situational dependent. All right, you're on the ground, you look, somebody's bleeding, they're gonna have, we're going to have to take story. them downtown, in the, let me call in. But okay. the, but the Wilbraham Regional, they do the MED, so they, they kind of say it's a BLS call or an ALS call. They give us very good information about what we're going to, but for the calls that they can control, there are yeah. times that they can't control can't, yeah, the sure, call, sure. depending upon what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, so we do get a little bit of a heads up in terms mm -hmm. of what the level of potential acuity is. A big concern is the people that fall. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. no idea what that what, fall what that is. Fall. Because they could have a head injury or they could have a Sinkable broken episode. leg or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but just to go back to Bob's point is that uh, we were having data problems. Mm -hmm. Now we have an overnight data verification process that we're using voice recordings and also GPS tracking mm -hmm. to identify when the truck is physically moving and when the call hits. So our data has gotten a lot better and it's really been locked down. So. We like where we are from a data perspective. It's mm -hmm. showing the system performing the way it was, what's supposed to. Um, we did have a, a delayed out of shoot time um, on Sunday, which we've addressed, addressed that issue with the crew. It's a policy violation. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to address those from a, a corrective action perspective as compared to um, being a poor mm -hmm. data issue. Two different situations altogether. And that was one of the calls you had stated it was over 10 minutes too. Right. I mean, it, was, it was out there. Yeah. Normal drive time is 11 minutes to the address. So yeah. I drove it today. It was like, yeah. Good, good weather and stuff is nine minutes and two seconds. So, I mean, it, it can get up there at that residence. That's right. So, you know, we'll continue to share that data. We'll continue <coughs> to send it to you until you're feeling that there's a very good comfort level. Um, you know, I will also say is that um, the exercise that we've gone through here, it's made us better as an organization because we're verifying mm -hmm. all of our data. Mm -hmm. It's not just handing the data. And so they're making those corrections for all of us, all of our systems across the board. So yeah. it hasn't been a... Um, a wasted exercise for us and um, you know for the people that held us accountable to that we actually appreciate it yeah so, okay, appreciate I have a that. question on data by the way um, and I've tried to read the reports the, the early reports they first provided and some other ones and I see different terminology in there in, in the glossary of definitions and then how we have definitions laid out in our contract of response time when you calculate a response time you list out of shoot time and then response time yep. is out of shoot time encompassed in response time or is that separate of response time that that's included in the response time we can do our calculation for response time the time we receive the call right it's, it's, it's listed as receive a call it's assigned to the vehicle <clears throat> from assignment perspective is when we start the, the clock ticking you'll notice that uh typically if you have an extended response time you route it right back to out of shoot time is typically the root cause of it that is part of the calculation. And then that's when I go and read those reports. I think they're not very clear, which I would like some oversight on. I, I see where you're saying there. When I first went in there, I'm calculating out of shoot time and then adding response time on top of that because it's, there's variables in clarification there. Yep. And, I, and I see it in the glossary terms, how it's listed one way, yep. but then it's broken down another way. So it leads one to believe that it could be lumped yep. together. You know, if you look at the contract, the contract says that uh, – out of shoot should be within 60 seconds. So that's probably why you have set up the reporting that way. Well, I think it's good to have that yeah. oversight. I mean, you know mm -hmm. how long somebody's in the, in the facility for before they it's critical. start the truck. Yeah, we sure. we mm -hmm. also have to explain with our crews, it's not, it's not acknowledging the call on the radio that stops the clock ticking. It's the time the truck starts to move. Mm -hmm. So if you look at our GPS system, the truck will light up when you turn the you know, powers up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That still doesn't stop the clock ticking. It's when it physically starts to move. In motion. Mm -hmm. That's when we, we click it, and that's where the modifications need to be made. And sometimes there's so much going on in dispatch, they have to go back and look at it. You know, that, because they're handling multiple that's calls simultaneously. Yeah. yeah, so it's important. It's critical information. We have a motion. I do want to echo kind of what Craig said, watching that meeting. Yeah. I've been on the board a while. We deal with a lot of different committees and boards, and committees that we appoint, we get involved with them because we appoint them or responsible for them. Elected boards and committees, that's different. The board is elected. We try not to get 
into their domains because they've been elected to do a job and they step up to know. But for us to offer suggestions to the committee that we appoint, it's totally proper. Totally proper. And we appreciate everybody on committee for volunteering their time. And we expect them to work cooperatively with us. And we'll see that going forward. No. Well said. Um, there is some other language I would like to discuss as a board in the contract that I think could be beneficial to everybody. We talked about that before. I know um, I looked at the thing that you had recommended in your email. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary in terms of like clarifying uh, the reports coming back and stuff like that and just making sure that we had the analysis done. You got a copy of Craig's suggestion. Did you see anything that jumped out of you with a problem? Um, I think there are some discussion points that still need to be potentially just uh, reviewed. Um, you know, some things in terms of we talked about paramedic training. You know, you know obviously we talked about. Let me explain that a little that. bit. Our current one, our current contract states for um, first responder and EMT training. Yep. I just added the word paramedic in there because you guys had talked about a shortage in paramedics. So I was trying to brainstorm ways where we could get people trained at a paramedic level to help facilitate not just you, but a statewide problem, yeah, and countrywide it's a, problem. It's a complicated issue. I understand that. Yeah. Right. It's also to put fingers back on us because I don't feel we've utilized the training opportunities as a community that are listed in that contract. Yeah, I would agree. So it's not, hey, I want this from you. It's, hey, I'm going to throw this in there as a discussion point because I feel we need to right. benefit from that more as a town that we are underutilizing. So again, I understand that, that some people may have questioned my motives there, but the talking points I'm creating out of this. Okay. How can we how can we move this forward? Is this something you want to discuss with Craig? I mean, I was comfortable with his things. Can I think we can hammer this out? If okay. it might take do it in an exec session next week. I don't even know if it rises to the level of exec session. I'd just like to know if the two of you come to an agreement with your two suggestions. If you want to explain it why yeah, I, something I, can't be done. Well, I, I, just... I completely understand his reasoning behind That's the right. paramedic thing. So I'm, I'm not disputing that. You know, okay, but I great. think there are other things in terms of executive session that we should talk about, um, especially since we're really looking at this this contract we're analyzing verbatim. You know, um, so I do think that we should talk about it offline in, in that type of because we're talking about a contract here and, and come through and uh, because there are some other talking points that we want to add as well. Yeah. Okay. More comfortable with uh, you want to withdraw your motion? And no. Talk, no. You want to move ahead? Yeah. No change to the contract. Uh, because if we take your motion, we can't uh, and modify anything in the current contract. I, I want to go ahead with my motion. I don't see anything in there. I mean, the paramedic thing is way too expensive. The, the, as far as the response time, that's fine. We just have to be the ones responsible for doing it, or someone's got to be responsible for doing it. And the same thing with the ALS BLS. What about personnel? I know it's listed in there that they have to abide by some standards, but for the reason of putting in disciplinary action under personnel is I feel that we may not have been getting reporting. Well, I don't know if, I don't know if we can get that. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if as, as a personnel human resource thing, you can, if you, if you uh, discipline someone for coming late to work or, uh, you know. Well, what about if somebody loses their medical credentials? They have to report that to the, the the EMS place within 24 hours, or something like that, right? Shouldn't that have to be reported to us? That was my point. Because if they're operating in town, I don't know if you want to get into those particular personnel issues and get dragged into potential litigation. Hmm. That's the problem. Which has happened. That's the problem. Because then we become party to the. Correct. And and I've I'm seen not sure it. how that party is us. If we're just informed that this person was operating in your town, they are no longer able to operate in your town. I would just say that information that could potentially affect an employee's future employment options that tends to create rumor mills. I like the way it, I think the way it becomes a liability is that if we're told that employee A can no longer be in town for whatever reason, and I don't know how we transmit that to us, but it gets out publicly, then we're liable. You know, it's like the HIPAA stuff. It's like all these things have to come without the HIPAA. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm even a little bit, I, I even question being a pharmacist and HIPAA thing. I even question when you put down the addresses of where we went. 
you know? You know, if you put one, if you put 57 Oak Knoll Drive, that may be a HIPAA violation instead of just putting Oak Knoll Drive. Michael, the things you talk about that were something, you mentioned that you'd be encouraged or you'd be for having an executive session for discussion. Are these break points for you or just something? Well, I think I mean, if we voted right now to renew, you'd walk away and go, well, it is what it is, or um, or you see things that strengthen it for action, strengthen it for Hampton, or what? I think it works both ways. I definitely do. But you I don't have a list. You don't have a list that you want to share in open session? Uh, no, not right now. I do have a list, but I don't want to share it in open session. Don, I'm willing to give it one more week. I want to respect, you know, they have something they want to share with us. I think it's, you know, I wish you had brought it up before because we've been talking about this for three or four weeks and you're aware we want to move on it. Well, I'm aware, but I think this, this conversation has also evolved over time as well. If there's an issue involving informing the town on, on HR personnel matters. I think we ought, we ought to refer that to town council to make sure that we don't get a situation where, which was just described where if some litigation happens, the town would get dragged into it. Well, personally, I'm not shocked the town would get dragged in. It seems like yeah. that's just the way it No, seriously, it's the <laughs> way it happens. That. <laughs> it's the way it happens. They go yeah. for everybody. Sure, sure. You know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Correct. You know. So. I find I'll withdraw my motion one more week and that's it we gotta we gotta it's less than a week now we're already on Tuesday we have to fish or cut bait here we're gonna say something else but I bet you were <laughs> leave that for two in the morning and, you know, I, and, and I you know All we're right. dragging this guy out here every week to go over the same thing he owns the company uh, <laughs> All right, I appreciate that Don thank you all right so Bob let's set an executive session let's do it at six next week Okay, so we bring you right in first, okay? And then if things work out well, put on the agenda, first on the agenda, action ambulance contract. If we can get everything straightened out, maybe we can vote on it then. How do you think that sounds? Okay. All right, Greg? Is there any information that should be exchanged during the week? Well, if you feel that you can, obviously we'd like a heads up. I mean, and you can share it. You can you share it with yeah. Bob that we're not going to be disseminating it, and it's per the executive session if that can be done. Okay. Okay. Because yep. otherwise, it'll take us an hour to talk about what you're talking about. But if we, if we have a sense ahead of time, it'll make things go better. That'd be that'd be fine. Okay. Pursuant to the executive session discussion, right. Right. these are what I'd like to discuss. Okay. You'll avoid deliberation, but you'll at least exactly, know, but we'll know. the exact session knowing right. what's going to be talked about. Yeah, he's painting the truck a different color, something, whatever. No. Thanks, Mike. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll talk next week. No, we're not shocked. It's on, it's on the agenda every week. Right, Don? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. McNamara. James Lord, are we... Are we ready for this? Do we is is there a difference? What's the difference from last year? Uh, about three percent, fairly modest increase. Three percent, uh, which we were very surprised. Right, but it's a the contract's expired, right? It no. expires June thirty. Right, so this is a do we taking advantage of the extension? Are we taking advantage of the extension? Yeah. Um, and he's asking for three years, so. Well, a three-year extension or a whole three new three-year contract? It would be a new three-year contract. Uh, it doesn't change person, other person than person. the numbers. No change. I have them both here. Oh, there's change. Regular changes to it. I'm just trying to pull up the original one right now. What I'm seeing, well, th there are changes in costs. But the but the, the deal is the same. He delivers it to Murphy, right? He de delivers it to Murphy. He. Uh, yeah, service fee hauling went up. Disposal went up a little.
I mean, then the Murphy went up, but that has nothing to do with him, right? No. <clears throat> Well, the service fees are staying the same. It's just the uh, the transportation fees that are going up. It's probably what gas. Gas, right, mm -hmm. right. Which we're paying extra for now, aren't we? Yeah. Doesn't he send us a bill like for eighty bucks? Surcharge. Surcharge. Are we getting surcharge now for fuel. Yeah. yeah. With every bill. So, will we get surcharged with the new contract still? I'm sure, we will. Yes. Every truck. We get that on almost every bill now. And he's been look. doing, and he's been doing a good job. He's been. <laughs> Jane, <laughs> Jane uh, I think you can't do that. We'll, we'll, we'll choke so on he, the answer there, but. So he's been yeah. doing a good job. He has been doing a very good job. I'm okay. very, very happy with McNamara. Okay. And in the first year, no. he's raising the hauling charge. From the current 155, 175, twenty dollar increase. So roughly twelve percent. No. Twenty five dollars. No. One fifty five to one seventy five. Yes. Uh, more than ten percent. That's. Let's see. Has it been going up every year of the contract? So year two is one ninety five. Year three yes. is two fifteen. Divided by one fifty five. Yeah. It started out it's twelve point nine percent. Yeah, the, the the contract started at one twenty five, right? And then and the, it's hard to read this writing. I mean, yeah, I know this yeah. is the strangest contract I've read. Twenty five. <laughs> we'll start off at ninety five, then one twenty five, yeah. and then year three is one fifty five. Wow. Yeah. But when he started, he was so much lower mm -hmm. than everybody. everybody. Else. He was way lower than everybody. So oh, yeah. much lower. Yeah. And, and, anyway. and how many trips do we do? What do we know? I usually call once a week for recycling, and then they do maybe every other week they do the trash, one of the bins of yeah. the trash. Mm -hmm. But the, our guys are so good. That stuff is chock full yeah, it is. when they car. And the really only thing is I, I've asked them many times to sort the bottles by color, and they don't, they don't do that. But that's all right. That's another whole thing. <laughs> Wow. But we have no room left to put another container no, because of the solar. No. So how, what do you think the bottom line difference is? So if the haulage is going up by 12 something percent, what's the entire contract going up by? Impact on? Well, the contract, how much more do they want? Oh, the, t the total. Uh, that, uh, I think the service fee stayed the same, 125 per month. The, the service fee? The service fee stayed the same. Just the hauling. Yeah, the hauling. Which everyone's gone up. We've had so many people. Because I think they charge him, don't they? When he goes to Murph, they charge him. Yes, something. they do. Mm -hmm. And we've had so many people join the transfer station because they're jumping ship with the private haulers because yeah. they oh, can't sure. afford it anymore. And uh, you can't look at that as a total because that is only a percentage of the entire contract. Right. So the 12% bump may only mean that it's a 12% bump on 20% of the contract bill. So. Right. Um, Do you have a number on the on-call uh, hauls? That's just under hauling and the recycling. Yeah. It's just it just means that I call them. That's what I mean. Do, do you track once, that? Yes, yeah, I do. Right. We have the tonnage, <clears throat> but I usually call for one, sometimes two, of the recycling bins to the go. Extension for the whole Every year. Year. No, I think we just do a one-year extension. That's all. The whole three-year contract bothers me just doing it form like that. That's what they were asked for. That's I what that. I was told oh, to ask them for. So. Yeah. I didn't ask in the language extension. of the contract we can do a one year renewal you can right okay. so and, and we then can just he go put this in here. his in his uh, proposal yeah. option to renew three years or more so you don't have to do that you can you can just simply renew. I just don't yeah. think yeah. I know we I just don't think we have the authority to do it I would be hesitant I don't to think do we a can full three yeah I don't exactly think we can. I think yeah. we can do the one because that's called out in the, the contract 
I, I'm, I move we renew the McNamara uh, Waste <coughs> Services contract for one year, extension, extended for one extension. year per their, their, per their previous contract. Well, their new quote numbers. For yeah. Whichever, yeah. With, you know, with the new quote numbers. We, we accept their quote numbers for a one year extension. Okay. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay. That's off the books. <laughs> Something done. Jesus. Go ahead. <laughs> I did not see Ryan Quimby this week. I'll try and get to him this week. Last okay. Week. Okay. Good. Thank you, Don. <laughs> I'll call you two. Um, correspondence. Um, I'm not sure if I can say anything. Can I? That we we know about a result. Yeah, you can. It's a public okay. record, right? All right. I think so. So we were notified by the town attorney that a decision was made by the judge in one of the storage cases that they accepted the planning board's uh, reasoning for denial. Um, obviously, must have a persuasive argument by uh, our town attorney. He was informed by the litigant that they will appeal. However, in his opinion, Actually, I can't share that part. Never mind. No. Anyhow, they are going to appeal. He's been told that. They have appealed. They have appealed. They have appealed. Yes. Came in this afternoon. Yep. yep. He sent so. a copy of the appeal, which I'll send mm -hmm. to you. No, the yep. appeals court we takes can't a long we time. Can't. We can't. Yeah, we can't. Yep. You know. There's some. Okay. But this is this is a major uh, step forward for the town because in the appeal, uh, it's not on the substance of the case. It's on whether the procedure was correct. Right. Uh, by the judge as well as by the, uh, right. the attorney. Well, they, you look at the court it went to, it's not surprising because it's not a zoning court. Land court. No. Right, yeah. No. Okay, uh, I think that's it for correspondence. <clears throat> oh, yes, quickly, I spoke to the lady who was running that event at Thornton Burgess. Who? She said she noted Aurora. Who? Funny. Aurora, uh, I can't remember her last name. She had notified quite a few yeah. groups in town. So she's looking for participation. I think Don's suggestion, and I echoed that to her, said hey, one of our board members would like to know about having a table there that would explain that we're looking for volunteers and different groups and stuff like that. And she was like, great. The event is going to take place in the gym, gym. which is why the usage form went to Park and Rec because they're in charge of gym usage when school's not in session. They're having they, a breakfast tomorrow, which I'm going to drop in on, um, to follow up on the proposal that they be involved in Hike Hamden. I can also mention at that time that we would like to have a table for the uh, W, is it WHO group? Yes. Yep. On March 5th. Who? Mm -hmm. Who? Yes. Yep. That's good. We it, can it's a coalition of groups. Staff that, frankly, table, basically. I don't think we know yeah. about, or I don't know much about. Yeah, it's the Welcome Hamden, yeah. Welcome Wolverham initiative or something. Yeah. Okay, that's what I have there. Selectman reports. Uh, last last Plan Tuesday, the. Oh, you got a report? I was. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go no, ahead. I don't have to talk too much. No, no. Last Tuesday, the. Uh, they call it the planning committee, <coughs> toured all the schools in the district. We spent the whole day touring the schools in the district uh, in, as part of the utilization type thing. And I have to say that two of the schools are packed to the brim. <laughs> are we surprised? Yeah. <laughs> you know, they really are, you know. And I think classrooms are divided. And even in the schools that aren't, have as, don't have as many students, even in those, some of those, they're, they're sharing classrooms, you know what I mean? They're, one teacher takes it in the morning, one teacher takes it in the afternoon, so. Gym and um, music and art are Music thing. and art are one of the things, yeah. yeah. I think I heard one of the schools, they've given up the library for classrooms. Yeah, yeah, what, Mil, so. Mil, Wilbraham Middle School. Yeah. And so they, uh, the next meeting of the group is uh, the 20, what's today? 28th, next Tuesday, 28th. So the, the next visit, you said, or you guys are just convening next yeah, week? Yeah, yeah. So you're not touring again next not week? Not touring again okay. next week, no. no. One, one what's going to be the outcome, you think? I mean, are, what's, what is this, the goal to come out with from all that? 
I think the, the soup. I think the superintendent has a plan, mm -hmm. but he's not quite sure what it is yet. And I think they they want to change the configuration of some of the schools mm -hmm. to, to accommodate the kids. The biggest thing I learned from it is that uh, <coughs> there really is a lot of uh, special needs type of programming in the system, mm -hmm. you know. And it takes it takes smaller classes, so that's why you got to use up the, the rooms, you know. Um, there was a question last week about the makeup of the Housing Authority Board. I looked into it, and there was a directive from the state back in 21 that, that the next election of an open seat, that they change it to an appointed member of somebody living in the thing. The effective date in 21 was July, so it was after the town election. The open seat, there was no open seat in 22 because that was the year it was the state appointee. So the next open seat is this election, of which the person who's on the board that lives in there is not going to run. A lady who lives there wants to run, so it would seem logical that we go ahead in coordination with the, unfortunately this is a board that's federally and state funded, but make sure it works out properly, change that uh, personnel or makeup of the board to one governor's appointee, one local appointee, and three elected people. The good thing is, checking with the state, they were quite happy that two of the people elected to the board live there. So they felt that the intent of their change had already been served, but they'd like to see it codified going forward. But we were not in disarray with them in any way to go on, because we, we had no open election. Yeah, we had no. You know, there was no. The, the, only, the only thing is, doesn't the <coughs> housing authority have to notify every tenant there first? At this point, uh, she's actually going through her uh, state. Everybody oh, belongs to a state that. group. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah, There's yeah, housing yeah. authorities, yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and they're seeing how they handle it. It's been, the bad thing is, I don't know if you know this, not, every state agency in the past two years to try and get an answer from, oh, yeah, yeah. it's impossible. Yeah. They'll say, you know, I got... You know, personally, I got unemployment thing. I don't know if you heard that, you know, where someone filed for unemployment in my yeah. name. You file a fraud report, good luck. There's nobody working still there. So you want to ask the state for an answer on something? Drive down and bang on their door. It's not just They're the not state. They're not answering the phone. Hmm? It's not just the state. <laughs> and the feds too, which I'm sure. Uh, planning, you saw the that they're looking for volunteers for the master plan committee uh, going forward with that. They asked for a placeholder for the town warrant that may need some funding at that point. And COA, we're just busy working on, you know, what we might be looking at for an addition to the building. The, we did meet with the architect who was quite pleased to know that the wetland thing was now out of the picture because when they first came to look at the senior center, that was their first thought was to go straight back with it towards the police station and then oh there's wetlands okay we'll go this way so it's good to know that they can go back to the original plan which because of the cost of changing roof lines whichever it actually costs a lot less to go straight back so good to know so there may be a new quote coming forward should we um it was it was in the minutes we just approved today where i had recommended bringing in becky and ellen should we entertain that idea since we know that there's no wetland delineage in there that maybe we can work on a joint project with the two two groups i think if you if you do a joint project you're basically putting both additions on at that point because right now you know the one addition is strictly we're talking about the senior center so you'd have to go back and then to the street as well to accommodate moving a library over there okay right so You done? Yeah. Speaking. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's all right. <coughs> Distracted. So, sure. You're, you're talking about doing the library there. I'm not talking about doing it there. I'm talking no, about no, let's, but I mean, let's have a conversation. Let's, let's, have, yeah, let's have a conversation about is it feasible? Is it possible? Would it set us up for the next 20 to 30 years? Mm. You know, and alleviate a overhead in this building that we don't know what's up with this building. Yeah. Right. I mean, you imagine when they come in here with that. They said 16 weeks. Um, 
I haven't counted the weeks, but it has to be coming soon. Part of the impediment to that, that's something we can look at. Um, having gone to many senior center events, that parking lot just for the senior can be full. Yeah. And if they're open at the same time, to try and find another 20 something spaces for the library might be difficult. Yeah. We tried to. Have you tried to park out here during the day? Oh, I know. <laughs> today, I know. today I had the what? The, was it a magician today? I, was it really? Three, three o'clock? Huh. It was packed. Yeah. Make some money up here. Okay. Um, uh, Water Commission met last week and we discussed the PFAS concerns that are going out through the, the 10 residents associated with the landfill over there. Um, we've decided that we were entertain options to connect them to the district mm -hmm. and we've tasked our water operator to put together a solicitation so we can put it out to bid. Um, I ran that by Bob. We're just going to double check, make sure everything looks legit, and then we're going to try to see what we can get rolling there. Great. Bob, you have a 10-page uh, report to give? Okay, we've covered much of my report already tonight, mm -hmm. but I did add, uh, if you flip it over, on the back, I did add Senior Center Building Committee Placeholder. Mm -hmm. at the request of the yep. director. Right. I did add accessory apartment placeholder. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All right. That will be kind of a, that might, because of a public meeting notice, things like that, that might be a push. But as I mentioned before, yep. we have a good guideline. The Wilbraham Zoning Bylaw, which allows for a special permit and annual review, right. is a very good outline. And the advantage is, Don, it's already been vetted by the AG. Yep. So we wouldn't be... You know, retilling new, uh, new ground here. So. Mark didn't bring up the new dump truck, though, right? No, he, he didn't. didn't bring up the new dump truck. No, no. he'd like no. to. He'd like to throw a dump truck on there. Yeah, he didn't bring it up, though. No. No. The good thing is, that would be, in his opinion, the only one needed for a few years because every other one is like eight or ten years newer. So, if that's true, we have a couple of years to play with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the uh, okay, what's the defibrillator maintenance contract? Oh yeah, yep. We've run out of defibrillator money basically from the original purchase that we we took a warrant article to buy them, yeah. and we were able to use the leftover money in the warrant article to right. pay for the annual maintenance, and that's right. pretty much gone. So we now need to restock. How much is it? Is the recertification maintenance? Is it eighteen hundred there... a year or something like that? Is it a, it's. Mandate to have them. 100 150 yeah, dollars per device, something like that. Yeah. Can, can, do we need a special warrant article for that, or do you put it under the Board of Health type of thing, or expenses, or something like that? Or? Should that be under Board of Health revolving? It's really, it's in every, no, most of them are in the police department. Police department? Yeah. Right. And then the I think there's only one in this building. You know, the senior, police, or police, police, police. police. school? School will cover their own, yeah. Oh, as well. Okay. I thought Scotty had left it. He was going to throw it in there, but yeah. yeah. The schools, the schools I noticed had them, but they yeah, must take it out of the school own, yeah. committee. Yeah, right. you got millions. As it got later in the day, I kept looking where it was just in case. I <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep getting closer to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you've You're already mentioned <laughs> the uh, the court case, the uh, yeah. court case, and uh, the result was favorable to the town, mm -hmm. and. Attorney Pellegrino is appealing. We've already talked about the Ambulance Oversight Committee. Uh, the health director was here today to talk about the cost overrun uh, for the Eastern Hamden District, uh, Eastern Hamden Health District. Um, I requested a written explanation for the expenses, which I'll bring into the meeting uh, as soon as I get it. East of the River Chamber has the breakfast tomorrow at Twin Hills. Uh, we've already discussed, well, we haven't discussed the whole conservation agent stormwater specialist. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's our only hope if we can, and I don't, I'm not even sure we can carry that off. Um, we have two major problems involving water. So, uh, the first meeting of the government study committee was last week at five o'clock. Uh, I did a, a benchmark uh, for current for the current government structure. Um, they're going to meet again on February 27th. Uh, Rick Green and I both informed them that we're not going to be involved and that uh, they're on their own. And so 
Yeah. We're, we That's really want a result that doesn't reflect influence from any other sources that are currently involved in town government. Yeah. This would be an outside review. You know, my concern with, and I've said it before about other committees, I'm not keen at the 5 p.m. meeting thing. I know sometimes, but I also sometimes that, yeah. to me, it seems like you're having it when people are still just leaving work, so you, you don't want them to see what's going on. The appearance optics thing, I don't like it. I don't like it either because we have a meeting. We have a meeting six, at 6 so following it, 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 yeah. You know, it's, it's one more hour. Last time we had a meeting, wasn't I, on Zoom, wasn't In this noticed. case, though, I think it was, uh, this was the only time uh, Don is a member. The only time that they could. Uh... I missed the first six. Okay. I'm meeting at six. In the middle. Yeah, of the they, they, she said they agreed on six. That was wrong. Where? The advisory is going to be downstairs. We downstairs. Advisory is going to be downstairs next week at six. We'll be up here. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said they said there, it's right too, in the where the copy machine is. Oh, okay. It'll definitely be secret. No zoom in there, boy. We already discussed the other items. The MVP are looking for $400,000 to do the engineering for the bridge. We've had one meeting with the state DEP on that. He seemed to be favorable. Um, that's a number that was uh, pulled out of thin air, but uh, it was. I had one conversation with Ty and Bond. They said it would be three hundred to 400000 to do the engineering to replace that bridge. Um, Zoom That's meeting. The, this is the Laughing Brook Bridge. Yes, the Laughing Brook. Okay, east, yep. east, uh, right. Yep. Uh, east Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, had the uh, session with Attorney Tom O'Connor. He said that uh, he's concluded preliminarily that the town does not have standing mm -hmm. yeah. to conduct a lawsuit for malfeasance. Okay. And one of my pet projects, the Boston Post Cane, as I mentioned last week, has been located. And I, I have to tell you, I presented that once to a lady over at the Housing Authority. And, yep, oh, you brought in the cane of death? And I'm like, oh, thanks. But, Jim, you were selectman for 12 years. Do you remember the selectman presenting the gold-headed cane, or was it typically the historical society? But, yeah, yeah. And I remember half the people didn't want it because, like, really? I'm the oldest person? I don't want to know. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Last time I did it in another community, the woman was over 100 years old and mm -hmm. she looked at me very confused and bewildered as like, to what I was doing. Why do I have this? Sure. But how about bringing it over and, and framing it? putting it on the wall. And many communities do that. And, uh, I, I would think more people would get to see it. These things were distributed in 1909. Mm -hmm. So they have some significant value. So where did you find it? It's at the Academy Hall. Great. And I Good place for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? And they have a replica. And apparently the replica was what was being given out and the real cane was was retained. Hmm. So, excellent. Will we adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any discussion? No. Discussed it.